A lone boar was running through the dark night jungle. The reason for his frightened look and haste was very simple. A terrifying insectoid moving through the trees with great speed was hunting him. In just a moment, the monster rushed at its victim and cut his life short. This monster was terrifying. Despite its rather large size, it was very agile, and its sharp sickle-like paws left no chance to its opponents. But for every big fish, there's always a bigger fish. And this time, he met a truly dangerous opponent. It was a group of hunters who intended to finish him off once and for all. During the short battle, the group of hunters managed to win an unconditional victory. The once strongest monster was now lying at the feet of the humans. Thousands of people watched from their screens. They were thrilled that the Sky Knight squad was able to destroy the S-Class giant Mantis Lord. This was definitely a big step forward for humans. But this wasn't exactly a fantasy world. A gray-haired guy dressed in a white robe adjusted his glasses. He said in a solemn voice that now the game values had finally stabilized. As previously stated, it was indeed a game. However, not everything was as simple as it might seem at first glance. This huge game was different from the others. Its main and biggest difference was that it was based on the real world. It all started 20 years ago. Spatial portals that led to other worlds suddenly started appearing all over the world. These worlds were fantasy worlds, as if from some fantasy novel. They were filled with various magical creatures and magic. These worlds also had another name, the jungle. After some research, it turned out that although the jungle was very dangerous, it couldn't interact or be connected to the real world. In simpler terms, nothing could be brought through the portal into the real world, including magical items or special skills that explorers gained while traveling. For a long time, no one could do anything about it, until one Shenchuan company bought the rights to the jungle. With their advanced technology, they were able to combine and transform different worlds into a large-scale interactive game. And it was called Survival in the Apocalypse. Lots of people became players and joined to play the game together. Once a person started the game and went through the portal, he became a knight. His primary task was to survive in this challenging other world. Although people in the game were not immortal and could die in the jungle, those who were bored with ordinary life still came into the game to experience something new. They weren't even scared of the monsters or the fact that they could die there forever. Today, most of the real world population has already been to other worlds. Some rich people have even hired some braves to live in other world. It's not just a game anymore, it's a real work of art. And Lin Tian, who is also the main character of this story, was one of the creators of this work of art. However, not everyone thought that what he was doing was right. As soon as he entered the office, he was immediately met by a crowd of enemies. Approaching our hero, their leader threw him a paper and irritably asked him if he was the one who changed the data and characteristics of the mantis. This arrogant fellow's name was Liu Daolong. He was a direct descendant of one of the company's top executives and was also a high-level warrior in the game. He didn't need Lin Tian's answer. He already knew that only he could do it. All he wanted was to chide him for daring to make changes without getting approval from the management. Our hero agreed that he hadn't coordinated his actions with the others, but he already knew that they would not accept his proposal. All he did was for the sake of the game balance, which had recently been severely disrupted. Currently, the game wasn't working at all the way he had originally intended. This could make the game unmanageable and lead to irreversible consequences. But no matter what he said, his words never reached Liu Daolong's heart. Grabbing our hero by his clothes, he asked in an embittered voice, since when did he get the authority to dictate his terms to the company? He stated that the company had its own reasons for action, and he just needed to follow them. Lin Tian didn't plan to put up with it so easily and be a puppet in the hands of the company. He was in charge and responsible for all in-game content and had already customized the monster design parameters as well as their characteristics. If they were to be changed, the consequences could be unforeseen. Liu Daolong realized that he intended to stand his ground until the last moment, so he changed his tactics. He said that everything depended on him and that he didn't need any excuses. He wanted to see the results. He wanted and nothing more. In the next moment, he said that if he didn't see the results he wanted, absolutely everyone would be out of a job. This did not suit the people around him, for they too were in danger of being fired. They immediately began to express their discontent, because they had already told our hero not to make any changes without the knowledge of his superiors. In their opinion, he just thought he was the boss, and his problems only added to their workload. Now that everything was under his control, Liu Daolong hinted to Lin Tian that if he didn't want to do it, he could just ask for his resignation. Our hero didn't understand what was wrong with these people. Their goal wasn't to make a game that everyone would enjoy. It was not in line with his principles, and so if he continued to work here, 
However, suddenly his thoughts were interrupted by someone's voice, and someone gently touched his hand. This person turned out to be a beautiful girl whose name was Luo Yue. She told him to calm down and not be so impulsive. Seeing her, our hero really stopped and didn't continue the conflict. Our hero was facing a really difficult choice. Because of some circumstances, he was burdened with a debt of millions of dollars. His only salvation was this job, which allowed at least somehow to stay afloat. If he lost it, he would most likely be beaten to death by debt collectors and left to die on the street somewhere. However, Lin Tian was also concerned about another issue. Was it really safer to continue working for the company? He wasn't sure, so he told Liu Daolong that he needed time to think about his decision. He didn't rush our hero, but reminded him that he should know his place. His job was to do what the company wanted him to do, and not to do what he shouldn't. That was the only thing they wanted him to do. After a while, Lin Tian was sitting on a bench together with Luo Yue. The girl sincerely thanked our hero for his advice. Thanks to him, she now understood what the problem was. Our hero only replied that there was nothing wrong with her design. All he did was make a few comments. But Luo Yue thought otherwise. After all, if it wasn't for his help, she would have been fired long ago. She was also worried that he often spoke out against the company. She was afraid that it could lead to bad consequences. After all, it was known that the company often used the jungle to get rid of their enemies. Therefore, it was very dangerous for him to quarrel with them so often. Lin Tian couldn't help but agree with her words, as he realized that the management would probably want to get rid of him. So he replied that he would take care of it. Hearing his answer, Luo Yue immediately smiled happily. Since he understood, it was time for her to return to the office. Lin Tian couldn't take his gaze away from her. He was the only person in the company that he could talk to. To him, Luo Yue was the only ray of light in his gloomy world. There was no way he could let her disappear from his life. Seeing his intense gaze, Luo Yue asked him what was the matter. Our hero abruptly jumped up and quickly walked over to her. He realized that this was very dangerous for him, but he had to warn her. She had to know about this. He worriedly and excitedly said that soon the company, or even the world, was about to experience great changes. Therefore, she should be careful. Hearing his words, Luo Yue was puzzled and asked what he meant. Lin Tian couldn't tell her more than that. However, he could still protect her. Therefore, he promised that he would do his best to make things right. Her answer to our hero was better than words. With a bright smile, she waved him goodbye and said that she believed him, whatever his words meant. She also hoped he would protect her. The company was indeed hiding a secret that could change the whole world. It was a secret he had learned quite by accident. However, he now realized one simple thing. Leaving the company would be dangerous not only because he could be killed by debt collectors. First of all, the company might suspect something and would probably try to kill him. He's been in a hole he can't get out of yet. In order to survive, he had to prepare himself properly. At the same time, the 76th meeting of the Shenchuang Tojekt was being held in the meeting room. One of the heads immediately reported that the Red Division had discovered that the jungle had begun to expand. This could only mean one thing. They were very close to the big event. However, the problem was that the jungle lord they had been waiting for never showed up. Liu Daolong, who was also present at the meeting, said that Lin Tian, who was in charge of the game's development, had always rejected the values they offered. He couldn't help but assume that this was because he had learned something. One of the people present at the meeting also confirmed his words. She said with certainty that he already knew the secret of the jungle. Another person present immediately said that in that case, they should have killed him immediately. It was a secret that could turn the world upside down. Ordinary people were never allowed to know about it. One of the heads of the company recognized our hero's name. He knew he was a very talented software engineer. To get him to work for their company, they had to go to great lengths to put his family in huge debt. Since it was originally Liu Daolong's idea, the man said that he now had to deal with it himself. It wasn't difficult. All they had to do was just lure him into the jungle and kill him. As always, no risk of anyone finding out. This guy was only happy to take this job. He had been waiting for this opportunity for a long time. After a while, loud sounds of battle could be heard in the jungle. After a while, everything quieted down. Standing in the middle of the many corpses was Lin Tian. Pointing at his clothes, Liu Daolong said that he didn't expect someone like him to use his gaming privileges to create such a divine look for himself. Furthermore, he couldn't even think that his squad of knights would suffer such heavy losses. He admitted that if it wasn't for Luo Yue who made him announce their presence, it would have been very difficult for them to find him. Liu Daolong was really curious about when he started preparing. He couldn't believe that our hero had assumed from the beginning that they would want to get rid of him sooner or later. However, none of that mattered anymore. 
A gloating smile appeared on Liu Daolong's face. In the next instant, blood spurted out. A treacherous blade pierced through Lin Tian's chest. Even if he was the strongest, it still wouldn't help. After all, he would never have thought that the person closest to him would be the traitor. It was Luo Yue. This time when he called out to her, he didn't get a bright smile like she always did. There was only coldness on her face. His helpless body collapsed to the ground. He knew that there was always the risk that his preparations would fail and he would die. However, he never thought of dying at the hands of the person he loved the most. It happened ten years ago. After an investigation conducted by Shenkuang Technology, it turned out that the jungle was beyond the real world and that mankind could exist peacefully with them. But it wasn't as simple as the company said it was. The truth was that the jungle was slowly but surely expanding, and in about ten years, they would completely engulf the earth. This meant that in the future, all mankind would have to enter the jungle and survive. And our hero Lin Tian was one of the architects of the game. He was responsible for transforming the jungle into a game that would be livable for humanity. Although the top management tried to hide the truth, but as the person in charge, he couldn't help but know about their plan. Our hero knew that those who know information that they shouldn't know don't live long. He had prepared for this in advance, and even successfully managed to defeat them. Everything was going exactly as he had planned. Except for one thing. The one person he trusted betrayed him. Turning to Lin Tian, she asked him if he still didn't realize that his life had been planned out from the beginning. From the death of his parents to the huge debt he owed to the company. The reason for all this was because of his amazing talent for game design. He never stood a chance in the first place. Even if the company's plan failed, she would still do it as the last guarantor. And so she did. But Luo Yue's mockery didn't end there. She mockingly said that she really regretted that such a genius would go to waste. However, right now our hero didn't care at all. So, it was you, was all he could say. The pain of betrayal was still very strong. Liu Daolong wasn't going to delay and so told Luo Yue that there was no point in her telling him about it. Their mission this time was just to kill him, but apparently they didn't even need to do it themselves. A gloating smirk appeared on Liu Daolong's face. All they needed to do was just leave him alone. After all, in his opinion, being eaten by monsters of his own design was quite ironic. Leaving Lin Tian to be torn apart by the terrifying monsters, they disappeared into the portal. Left alone, our hero prepared to die. He wasn't even going to resist, because in his condition, he wouldn't be able to do anything. It seemed that this was the end. However, in the next moment, a message from the system appeared in his fading consciousness. The system had detected a huge threat to the host's life. It was an emergency, so it immediately activated the jungle system. At once, the jungle lord's identity began downloading. Everything was successful, and a moment later, our hero had already reincarnated into his new identity. He was now an alienated mantis of the first level. The system immediately reported that he had one active skill, Flash, and a passive skill, Jungle Instinct. For level one, it was quite good. That wasn't all. Just a moment later, a bright beam of light fell on a clearing that was somewhere in the middle of the jungle. Lin Tian was finally able to open his eyes and look around. The fact that he could see something was already proof that he had succeeded. The world in front of his eyes looked slightly different. The reason for this was simple, and had been reported even earlier in the system window. He was no longer human. However, now for our hero, this was in the background, because first of all, he was happy that he had successfully managed to fool the management of the company. In their opinion, it was his armor that was his trump card, but that was far from true. It was what he had become that was his real trump card. After the jungle appeared, people immediately began to explore it. As it turned out, the jungle was originally home to a powerful being, the Jungle Lord. Although he had disappeared a long time ago and had never reappeared since then, there was a lot of information about him. Almost every carved stone showed how much he was feared by the races of the time. Researchers also learned that when master class creatures died in the jungle, their powers still existed in some form of existence. Simply put, the spirit of the former lord of the jungle was still alive in some form of existence, just waiting for the right chance to be reborn. Considering its power, it could pose a huge threat to the game they were creating. Realizing this, Liu Daolong immediately volunteered to be the one to try and find a solution. He intended to find the potential danger and completely eliminate it as soon as possible. Lin Tian, who was also a member of the research team, and said that they currently didn't have any clues about this power. He also added that if anything is discovered, he will report it immediately. That's exactly what he told the company. However, this was actually his real escape plan that he had kept specifically for himself. 
that power of the jungle lord that they had searched so long and hard for was now his. However, there was something else that matched and complemented that power. It was the jungle system. It was the one that would help him become stronger. In just a moment, his first mission appeared in front of him. Survival. His presence had attracted the attention of the jungle monsters, and now he was being hunted. Our hero's task was quite simple. He just needed to survive. The reward was 1,000 jungle points. Lintian used to often go and hunt in the jungle. Right now, he was in the dark forest, which meant that the monsters that lived here were spectral wolves, and they were already here. The very next instant, just as our hero had predicted, an enraged wolf pounced on him. However, even though the attack was so sudden and fast, our hero managed to dodge it without any problems. All this was thanks to the passive skill jungle instinct. Thanks to it, Lintian could sense evil intentions and react instinctively. He had encountered spectral wolves many times before. They were low-level monsters and most often lived in the dark forests of the jungle. They had average combat power, and like normal wolves, they liked to hunt in packs. Their greatest strength was in numbers. Fortunately for our hero, it didn't matter, because all the wolves were low-level. Besides, his passive skill wasn't the only one in his arsenal. His biggest advantage was the attack skill Flash, a skill that helped him move with incredible speed and attack his opponent. Despite his tremendous speed, Lintian had no problem controlling it and risking crashing into something. The reason for this was because his passive skill jungle instinct was able to handle it perfectly and allowed him to move as he wished. The combination of these two skills was really quite good and worked perfectly, but they weren't the only things that were everything to our hero. He was a game developer, and that implied a great deal of knowledge about the game and its mechanics. Having spent more than a year in the jungle, he knew every little detail. When one of the wolves was heading towards him, he didn't even bother to do anything. After all, he knew that the wolf's fate was already sealed the moment he stepped on an unremarkable flower. This flower was actually a predator. Normally, it is in a state of sleep, but if activated, it was almost impossible to escape. Taking advantage of the flower being distracted by the wolf and mercilessly devouring it, Lin Tian successfully finished them both off. Minimum effort, maximum result, that was what his knowledge allowed him to achieve. Although he still had to deal with the other wolves, it was not a problem. After finishing with the wolves, our hero noted that his stamina was almost depleted. However, thanks to killing monsters, he managed to reach level 3. Although he was a little tired, he felt much better in the jungle than in human society. Distracted by his thoughts, he didn't notice that the system still hadn't sent him a message about the completion of the mission. This could only mean one thing, and that was that the threat had still not been eliminated. At that moment, Lin Tian realized that he had been too careless and relaxed. At the same moment, his jungle instinct skill sounded an alarm, warning of the approaching danger. As it turned out, it was another wolf that was lurking and waiting for the right moment to attack. And as a matter of fact, it was a great strategy that allowed the spectral wolf to take even an experienced hunter like our hero by surprise. However, things were actually much worse for Lin Tian. He would be able to fend off a level 1 wolf like the ones he had fought before. But the problem was that this time, he was dealing with a spectral lord wolf that was level 6. But still, it was impossible to completely blame Lin Tian for being inattentive. The probability of a low-level monster lord appearing here was less than 1%. He couldn't even think that he would actually encounter one. Even though he was a reborn jungle lord, he was only level one now. The gap between their levels was so big that he could even feel the pressure just by standing nearby. Lin Tian was shocked and tried to figure out what he was to do. But his opponent didn't leave him any time to think. Already in the next moment he rushed at our hero, trying to destroy this overgrown beetle with one bite. Still our hero managed to dodge. However, the biggest problem was that his stamina was almost at its limit, and the situation was getting worse by every second. The Wolf Lord endlessly continued to attack. Lin Tian had no choice but to dodge, but his lack of stamina was making him feel worse. After only a few of these attacks, the Spectral Wolf Lord managed to injure him. Gritting his teeth in pain, our hero irritatedly noted that the Spectral Wolf Lord was really fast and strong. In his previous life, he would have had no problem dealing with such an opponent. But now, even a level 6 monster was a problem. Well, that was just for now. He needed time to survive and recover. However, the wolf didn't give him a second to rest, and blocking its attacks with his hands was madness. The situation seemed hopeless. To say the least, Lin Tian realized to his horror that this was no joke, and he would really die if he did nothing. Realizing this was truly terrifying. However, he wasn't going to die yet. He had survived all of the company's attempts to kill him, 
he had tricked them and had been reborn as a jungle lord. Giving up and dying when he had already managed to accomplish so much seemed too sad ending. Luckily, he had enough memories and motivation to want to keep living. It wasn't the company that pissed him off the most, for he knew from the beginning that it would try to kill him. There was only one person our hero hated the most right now. The person he had helped and mentored while working for the company. Luo Yue had asked him for help quite often, and he had never refused to help her. He always patiently answered even her dumbest and most obvious questions. He explained to her that Jungle was not like the games they had created before. The structure by which the game was built had to take into account more possibilities, rather than operating on a rigid formula. The reason for this was quite simple. The jungle was alive. Getting stabbed in the back by the person he trusted the most was painful, and it was that pain and hatred that made him want to live. As he had said earlier, the jungle was indeed alive, so he couldn't accurately predict everything that could happen. Surviving at all costs was all he needed right now. This was the only way he could get his revenge. In the next instant, the wings on his back began to vibrate. Escape was the only option. Therefore, Lintian didn't hesitate to spread his wings, which didn't exist for beauty at all. Instantly turning around and using his wings for more speed and maneuverability, he began to run away on his last strength. In an instant, he had covered several dozen meters and seemed to have no trouble breaking away from the spectral wolf lord. Was it really that easy? It might have seemed so at first glance, but it was far from that. Although the wolf was losing in speed and could currently reach our hero only in close combat, it was not a problem. In the next instant, the wolf activated its blood tracking ability. Threads of blood immediately revealed straight behind Lin Tian. Our hero knew what this ability was. A level 6 spectral wolf lord possessed the blood tracking ability. It was simply impossible to avoid its tracking or simply run away. All Lin Tian was trying to do was to stall for time and find a way to deal with the wolf somehow. His brain was working at full speed, trying to find a way out of the situation in his knowledge. However, neither the ogre flowers nor the exploding berries and misty toxic mushrooms that he had come up with and could use right now wouldn't work against an opponent of this level. While he was trying to think of something, a large tree appeared in front of him. Seeing it, Lin Tian immediately realized that this was his chance. He decided to take a risk. Without wasting a second, he instantly flew into the air. However, his plan wasn't to escape through the air, he didn't know how to fly yet, and his stamina wouldn't allow him to do so anyway. His target was a tree, which he climbed up and grasped with a firm grip. From such physical and mental strain, his body and mind were already at their limit. This was his last chance to survive, so he couldn't let it go. However, he had already done everything in his power. All that was left was to pray and hope that everything would work out the way he had planned. The wolf had already caught up with him and was only slowly approaching. He knew that the agile humanoid insect wouldn't run away from him. But as it turned out a moment later, it was a big mistake to underestimate the game developer. Lin Tian was now unable to resist the monster in a head-on fight. However, for every big fish, there is always a bigger fish. And luckily for our hero, he found a suitable candidate. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to introduce the second participant of this battle, Stalagmite Bear Lord, Level 7. That was our hero's plan, and luckily for him, it worked. While the wolf was distracted by a more serious opponent, Lin Tian decided to run away. For the first time in a while, he could finally breathe out a sigh of relief. He had survived. Down below, a battle of true giant monsters was unfolding. Even though the wolf was a level below, it still wasn't going to back down. Watching them fighting, Lin Tian said to himself that he had to get out of here as soon as possible, because at any moment, he could be dragged into the battle again. And fighting in his condition like this against such heavyweights was too risky. However, would he be a true protagonist if he didn't confront the impossible? His system thought roughly the same thing. Already in the next instant, he found that he couldn't escape anywhere. According to the information in the system window, he would fail the mission if he left right now. As he ran away, he completely forgot about the mission. He knew that his presence was attracting the attention of the jungle monsters, and also that this stalagmite bear was provoked by his actions. Because of this, he assumed that the system wouldn't include the bear in the mission. And since that was the case, only the spectral wolf lord remained last on his mission list. But there was no need to worry about him, because it was only a matter of time before the bear won. He was level 7, and he was also a single lord, which meant he was even stronger. Everything happened just as Lin Tian had predicted. As soon as the spectral wolf was dead, he received a system notification that he had completed the mission. In addition to the promised 1,000 jungle points, it also activated the skill bar. 
Just like in a normal similar system, he could improve his skills using the same jungle points. Lin Tian was very interested in the skill bar that opened up. After opening it, he saw several categories of skills. The first category was C-level general skills. This category included attach poison, stealth, invisible, and flight. They could be purchased at fairly inexpensive prices. The second category was advanced C-level skills. So far, there was only one skill, and it was called Monster's Will. It cost as much as 1,000 jungle points and allowed him to activate the will of the jungle lord, which could scare away monsters. But this skill had a disadvantage, because as the effect of the skill became stronger, there was a risk of losing his own will. Next came the B, A, and S level categories, but none of them had skills yet. The system store had also not been activated yet. For Lin Tian, this was already something interesting. He decided that he should find a safe place as soon as possible and carefully examine everything. However, things didn't go according to plan again. After killing the wolf, the bear didn't even think of calming down. He immediately started climbing up the tree in an attempt to kill him. Lin Tian didn't even consider any other option but to run away. There was no way he could deal with such an opponent. Without wasting a second, he immediately started moving through the trees in an attempt to escape. Stalagmite Bear Lord wouldn't be as agile as a wolf, and he had no tracking skill. Putting these facts together, our hero thought he would be able to escape without a problem. However, it wasn't that simple. No matter how much Lin Tian ran away, the bear didn't even think of lagging behind. What added to the horror of the situation was the fact that he had only one life. After all, even one strike from such a monster meant certain death. The situation was worse than ever, and the only way out for him were the skills that he could acquire for jungle points. It was impossible to hesitate, for his opponent was even more of a problem than he thought. Poison attacks against his rough and thick skin were useless. Using stealth against his earth attribute perception would also be useless. Regarding the flying skill, in the actual battle it seemed useless to Lin Tian, but to escape now, it was just right. But the problem was that the bear had already managed to wound his wings, and by the time he didn't heal them, this skill was useless to him. In the next moment, the bear easily snapped the tree he was sitting on in half. Something had to be done quickly, because once he ran out of stamina, he would definitely die. All he had left was the last of his possible skills. It was the one that was going to decide his fate, Monster Will. A moment later, a system window appeared in front of him, informing him that he had successfully mastered the skill. At that moment, another monster was born under the light of the full moon. After appearing in the air, Lin Tian appeared in front of his opponent. Everything was about to be decided in the next moment. Or was it already decided? Our hero was no longer the same as before. His speed had increased several times, leaving no chance for the bear to win. In an instant, Stalagmite Bear Lord was pierced by hundreds of streaks of light. After using 99 flash skills on his opponent, our hero slumped to the ground. Though not easy, this was a well-deserved victory. Finally, the problem was solved. But as the system had warned, it was not without consequences. An incredibly sharp and intense pain pierced Lin Tian's entire body. Unable to stand on his feet, he fell to his knees. This was the fee for using such a strong skill. However, this was not just a restriction or punishment from the system. The reason was much more serious. The remnants of the Jungle Lord's consciousness were still alive and were trying to take control of his body. Meanwhile, at Shen Chuang Technology Company, the villains, after thinking that they had gotten rid of Lin Tian forever, organized a meeting with the company's management. Liu Daolong, speaking in front of the mysterious company management board members, reported that Lin Tian has been executed by monsters in the jungle. And from now on, Luo Yue will officially take over his position and duties she will now be responsible for the development of Apocalypse Survival. The director of the company said that they have high expectations for Luo Yue and hope that she will not let them down. Now the only thing he was still curious about was if there was any news about Jungle Lord. Luo Yue reported that a previous study had found that in the history of the jungle, high-level monsters were called masters. They can be killed, but their will and strength will remain the same and will continue to exist even without a body in another form of existence. It can be inherited again by another being, and it will be somewhat like reincarnation. That is why the one who inherits this power at the same moment will run the risk of being absorbed by the will of the monster who was the lord of the jungle before. The bearer would become a complete puppet, and his consciousness would be completely destroyed. The jungle lord will then completely take over his body, and would rule the jungle just as he did thousands of years ago. One man from the board of directors heard this, and said that it means that this power is very dangerous, and should not be sought after. It would only bring trouble. But the director of the company was of a different opinion. 
Yes, he recognized that this power was dangerous to the bearer, who did not have a strong enough spiritual power to resist the invading consciousness of the jungle lord. There was a risk that whoever tried to fight the jungle lord in such a spiritual battle would be consumed and gain dominant power in the process. In any case, if humanity wanted to enter the jungle, they must control this power. And who but those present should know that great risks are accompanied by also great benefits. So they should give it a try. Luo Yue bowed respectfully to her superiors and promised that she would do her best and make every effort to find the power of the jungle lord for the company. Meanwhile in the jungle, Lin Tian was just experiencing his first encounter with the spirit of the previous jungle lord, and his cry of pain echoed through the jungle. He could barely keep himself from losing consciousness, and wondered if this was the remaining consciousness of the jungle lord. Lin Tian could barely hold on and fell to the ground scraping it with his claws in a desperate attempt to endure the pain. He realized that it was invading his mind, and if he lost, he would become an unconscious killing machine and a horrible monster, forever losing his self. He had to hold on. He didn't even have the right to lose, he just couldn't. He had to live. Lived to get revenge on those bastards who had so screwed up his whole life, used him, and then tried to kill him. Finally, his grim determination for revenge was enough to successfully confront the past lord of the jungle, and with a final scream, he rid himself of this invader. That shout traveled between the trees in a wave and the jungle lord's spirit left with it. Immediately after, a pillar of energy lit up the night jungle, and Lin Tian's shell exploded. Once the dust cleared, it was clear that he had won this encounter, but just barely. Yes, he had finally managed to get rid of the side effects of the Jungle Lord's form, but at what cost? Although the destructive power of this Jungle Lord transformation skill is amazing, the damage it does to his spirit was too great. The Jungle Lord's spirit will return, and in the next fight there is no way to know who will win. Also a new evolutionary form has been unlocked, and although it's still a monster body, it retains more human traits while maintaining a human will. Still, he should have found a way to start the Helen Butterfly Elf program in order to evolve into a fully-fledged monster in the future. For without their support, his spirit would be broken sooner or later. But with them, he has a chance. Because these marvelous creatures, Helen Butterfly Elves are a race of light, attributed elves in the jungle who have excellent support skills. A few years ago, Lin Tian launched this program himself and even presented it to his management. But they didn't like the idea at all because they felt that the Helen Butterfly race isn't very powerful and its impact on the game would be too negligible. Besides, entering their domain, the Labyrinth Valley, was a really dangerous. That was why Lu Daolong didn't even want to waste time on those poor elves back then, because there were many important things to do besides them. But then Lin Tian insisted and explained that their game lacked a creature that would serve as a guide NPC, and Helen Butterfly Elf is undoubtedly the perfect fit. However, Liu Daolong still didn't like the idea. He even went to the director to press Lin Tian, but he refused and said that it was not worth arguing about. After all, Lin Tian was in charge of the game, and he made all the decisions. Instead, the director advised Liu Daolong to take care of his duties, and since he was in charge of combat explorations, he could assign the task to someone else, if he didn't want to do it himself. So he decided to assign this mission to Luo Feng from the second team. He will definitely do it, and he likes such missions. Now our hero had to hurry up and start searching. Helen Butterfly Elf's power can enhance his spiritual power, and if the contract can be successfully concluded, there will be no limit to his monster will. Before, he wanted to use the company's power to open an entrance to the Helen Butterfly Elves. Since then, the Helen Butterfly program has been handed over to Luo Feng of the second team. Our hero thought that it's a pity that Liu Daolong didn't take this mission seriously, so it hasn't been taken down. If he remembered correctly, that guy from the second team, Luo Feng, was a very experienced and skillful player and jungle explorer, and since he had been assigned this task, he would probably be out there somewhere. In order to deal with him, he needed to be well prepared. Lin Tian needed to find a way to unlock the rest of the general skills first, and in order to do that, he needed to earn points for evolution. The next main mission was available to him just for that. He had to protect the jungle because as a jungle lord he was obliged to fulfill his duty, expel the intruders, and defend the various clans in the jungle. This long-term mission was divided into several sub-missions. For completing the main missions he could get B-level skill panel activation and unlock monster mode. And for the fulfillment of ordinary daily simple missions, he received only 50 or 100 jungle points. For example, among the daily missions were such tasks as being warm and friendly and helping a weak mushroom clan to rebuild their fortifications and gain their favor, or he could raise his prestige by mediating the dispute between the Spider Liar and the Dry Bones Cave to show his prestige as the Jungle Lord. 
Lin Tian had noticed this division into main and side missions and had realized how easy some of them were, but unfortunately the reward for them was too small. Although it was obvious that the more difficult and risky the mission, the higher the reward. That's why our hero was most interested in the main mission, the reward for which was unlocking the monster mode, even sounded intriguing. In any case, it was necessary to get down to business and earn more points. So Lin Tian decided to first complete a few daily missions and unlock a couple of life-saving skills. So, Lin Tian helped the Mushroom Clan finish their construction and enthusiastic mushrooms invited him to taste their poop. Of course, our hero refused such nice gifts as best he could. And in general, the main thing was not that, but the fact that he was able to earn 50 jungle points for completing this mission. In the Spider Liar, he was pestered by a big-breasted female spider monster who seemed to want to do something wrong. Our hero barely managed to get away from such a beauty, her fingers were just too sticky. Anyway, this mission was successfully completed and another 100 jungle points were obtained. Next, Lin Tian was taking care of bird eggs on a cliff, fighting off a venomous snake monster while being pecked on the head by a baby buzzard that had broken out of its shell. This went on until he finally managed to accumulate 700 points to unlock the skill. But how tired he was during all this time, now even clicking on the system interface seemed to be an impossible task for him. So, our hero had three C-level general skills to choose from, and with the points he had accumulated so far, he could afford to choose only one of them. Now he had to choose what would be better for him, attach poison to an attack, gain stealth skill, with which he could use the jungle environment to become invisible, or receive flight ability by growing wings with which he could fly at high speed. In addition to all this, there was also a new mission, guard the jungle by hunting intruders. To fulfill this mission, he had to hunt down the human race from beyond the jungle to show his resolve as the jungle lord. There was a pretty solid reward for this mission, and as a bonus, the store feature was unlocked. Looking at the details of the mission, Lin Tian came to the conclusion that hunting intruders meant hunting human players, although it didn't matter to him at the moment. The only thing he wanted to gain now was access to the store feature, which was very important indeed. After all, thanks to it, the jungle points would be used for more than just skills. And now that he had decided to go down the monster path, he would soon completely abandon his identity as a human being to become a true jungle lord with the help of this store feature. It was night in the jungle, and its silence was broken only by the sounds of a battle coming from some distance away. The culprits were a group of hunters who were beating a poor goblin. Their goal was to find the entrance to the labyrinth, because only by entering the center of the valley and getting the secret key, it was possible to enter the real territory of Helen Butterfly Fairies. Having defeated one goblin, they decided that it wasn't as scary as the rumors said. However, that wasn't what made the hunters excited and anticipating success. What they were most interested in was what was inside the area, namely Fern Tree Realm. According to the rumors, it was an incredibly beautiful place that hid mysteries and secrets. It was in one of the advertisements on the forum that after opening the road to the valley and obtaining the secret key, a huge reward was given. They expected it to be very difficult, and in no way expected to encounter only a few low-level monsters at the entrance. It felt like this time they could get a huge profit without any risks. However, as it turned out a moment later, their carefree adventure was not as safe as they thought. An arrow instantly pierced through the head of the too relaxed leader of their group. From the surprise and the sight of blood splattering everywhere, the rest of the group was horrified. It happened too quickly for the hunters to realize what was going on. The culprit was a goblin with a bow and a devilish smile on his face, but this time he was far from alone. And no, it wasn't even three of them. There was a whole army of them here. A few goblins didn't pose much of a threat to the hunters, but dealing with hundreds of armed goblins was a different matter. The end of such an encounter was obvious. Despite all the resistance of the hunters, the goblins didn't leave them a single chance. Having defended their territories and restored justice, the goblins began to collect trophies from the hunters. Collecting interesting things from dead adventurers was probably their favorite pastime, but their peaceful pastime didn't last long. Suddenly, a wall of fire surrounded them, trapping them. Attempts to escape from this hell were unsuccessful. This was true magic power. This time, the goblins faced a truly powerful opponent. It was far from the same loser hunters they had defeated. This time, they were truly masters of their craft. It was a team of professional hunters, led by berserker Luo Feng. They were also interested in the forum mission, though they had sent them here from the game's main development office. Taking advantage of the few groups of amateurs who had also come to try their luck at the S-rank mission, they simply used them as bait. Since they had managed to lure the monsters out without much effort, the only thing left to do was to finish them off. 
In the very next instant, an arrow that glowed with a bright golden light soared into the air. Suddenly, it split into hundreds of other arrows, and a deadly rain of arrows rained down straight towards the goblins. But it wasn't just the arrows that were a threat to them. The other hunters also rushed into battle. Our hero watched from the sidelines. Even experienced hunters had no chance to notice him, because he was in stealth mode. In his opinion, using the rookie hunters as bait wasn't a bad strategy, but it was too cheap for him. Unfortunately, he looked too much like a monster now, and it wasn't safe for him to enter human cities. After all, the task of finding intruders could easily be accomplished this way. Attacking innocent bystanders was absolutely not Lin Tian's style. However, the guys from this team were not like that at all. They were the ones who were screwing over researchers from the same company just to compete for resources. In the past, our hero had often had to deal with this sort of thing. But each time, the company management turned a blind eye to it and said that it was just an accident. Our hero knew the truth and didn't want to put up with such injustice. He tried to tell Lu Daolong to stop hiring hunters with criminal backgrounds and put an end to these senseless killings. However, his words were powerless against Liu Daolong's rotten brain, who only smiled wryly in response. He pretended not to understand what he was talking about and advised Lin Tian not to poke his nose where it didn't belong. He even suggested our hero call the police if he thought they were criminals. To make a long story short, this team was a bunch of trash who had also participated in the siege and suppression of himself before he was treacherously killed. That was why he had no qualms about killing them. They even deserved it. But Lin Tian still had a big problem in front of him in eliminating them. The difference in strength between them was still very large. They had plenty of strong people in their team, whose level even reached 13. But the biggest danger was their leader Luo Feng, a level 15 berserker. All of them were criminals who killed without hesitation. For the past few days, our hero had been following the strategy of leveling up the fastest. But even so, he was still only at level 10. And since using the monster's will was out of the question, it was still too dangerous for him to deal with so many people surpassing his level. Luckily, after completing the missions, he had some points, thanks to which he unlocked the stealth function. It was thanks to this feature that he was able to sneak up on them unnoticed and start thinking up a plan of action. Moreover, the rewards from the previous daily missions go beyond jungle points. The rest of the battle is entirely up to him. And of course, from the cute and joyful mushroom, who was obviously ready to help him, High in the sky above the jungle, there was a bird soaring in the sky. It was thanks to it that one of the group members could observe everything from the air. Unfortunately for them, at the moment, more than 70% of the area was covered in fog, making it very difficult for her spirit pet to see clearly. Hearing this, Luo Feng told her to order her spirit pet to go lower and investigate everything carefully. The girl immediately discarded this idea, because if he was near the ground, he would easily fall within the range of the monster's attacks. However, the big guy didn't care about that at all. He immediately put her in front of a choice. Either she seeks a way as he tells her, or she dies. The girl had no choice, so she did as he told her. The consequences were not long in coming. An arrow flew out of the mist at great speed and instantly struck her spirit pet. The girl immediately coughed up blood. The attack inflicted on her pet was directly affecting her as well. However, Luofeng was only concerned about whether she was able to see anything. From his look, one could easily tell that if he failed, he was ready to get rid of her at the same moment. Fortunately, the girl was lucky and managed to see the layout of the valley. This was great news for the group. Luo Feng wasn't going to waste a second and informed everyone that they were immediately going to the valley. After a while, the group of hunters reached some sort of cave. It was unknown if this was the route they were looking for. However, one thing was certain, it stank very badly. The smell was so strong that the whole group had to cover their noses with their hands, the reason for this was the huge piles of monster poop that were scattered all over the cave. The girl who had checked the route before was surprised by this, because when she saw this place for the first time, there was no such thing. Chung Jai, the archer, noted that the poop looked fresh, which meant that it had been installed recently, while the mage girl in their group, named Sarah, immediately suggested to change the route and take a different path. Luo Feng, on the other hand, had a different opinion on the matter. If the jungle monster was deliberately trying to force them to choose a different path, then most likely the other path was more risky. That was why he decided to keep moving on this one. He immediately ordered the others to clear the road for him. As it turned out, Lin Tian had been watching them the entire time. Despite his expectations, the group of hunters continued to advance. It looked like his trap was too obvious. The plan wasn't working. However, that wasn't a problem since he could still take it slowly. It was time to proceed to plan B. The cute mushroom sitting on his shoulder was also ready to put up its best effort. Speaking of mushrooms, they lived in clans. 
They could be found absolutely everywhere in the jungle. Although they looked harmless, they were very useful to the jungle. Their initial skill, Growth, allows them to freely travel underground and easily help our hero to explore the valley. Lin Tian had to go through a lot of trouble to increase his popularity and get the mushrooms to be so favorable to him. He even ate the mushroom feast they prepared for him. After gaining the deep friendship and favor of their king, he received help from dozens of mushroom tribes, including the mushroom he had on his shoulder. There were several kinds of mushrooms in total. The first was the purifying one, whose function was to purify the air of odors. The other kind of mushrooms were stink mushrooms. They were huge in size and could emit unpleasant substances and odors. This was the mushroom that our hero used. Now it was time for the official battle. It was time to hunt. And for a successful hunt, he had everything ready. The key role was to be played by excitement mushrooms, which specialized in giving off a pungent odor to drive monsters crazy. Even a single mushroom could drive a pack of monsters crazy, and a group of them could drive a small area of the jungle into madness. As soon as the spirit wolves smelled this odor, they immediately just broke off the chain and rushed in search of any living prey. Soon a group of hunters managed to pass this poop cave. Even though they didn't have to fight, they still didn't look very good. There were many complaints, however, Luo Feng immediately ordered everyone to shut up, because according to the map, it should have been safe after this area. However, that was only supposed to be the case. In fact, in the very next moment, one of the guys pointed at something in front of him in bewilderment. It was a small light that was visible from behind a bush. But the guy was experienced enough to know what it meant. There was a look of horror on his face. In the next moment, he started to run away from the pack of furious spirit wolves with panicked screams. The safe zone mentioned on the map was not so safe anymore. But even in such a situation, Luo Feng was not confused. In his opinion, these were just a few low-level monsters that must have accidentally gotten here. There was no need to worry. However, after a moment, it turned out that there were more wolves than they thought. Dozens of spirit wolves began to appear from the forest. This could already be a problem. Moreover, there were more than just wolves among the monsters that had appeared. This was very strange. The hunters only had one question. Why were all kinds of monsters gathering here and attacking them? But Luo Feng already knew the answer to this question. This couldn't happen by itself, from which it could be deduced that someone had clearly trapped them. Things were getting very bad. There were too many monsters. Realizing that they couldn't cope, Luo Feng ordered everyone to retreat. The hunters desperately started trying to escape. Few managed to do so, as the monsters had killed most of the group in the meantime. However, those who managed to escape were also in for a surprise. Suddenly, a huge mushroom appeared in the air, which was approaching the ground at a great speed. Unfortunately, it didn't fall on top of them and crush them. The purple pheromones it released scared the monsters and made them run away in panic. The surviving hunters were very surprised by this. At one point, they even thought they had been saved. But that was far from the case. In the next moment, a silhouette of a man appeared in the fog, and then they heard a voice asking them if they remembered him. Everyone present froze in place from shock. They knew that voice very well. There was a smile on our hero's face that was even more like a villainous smile. In any case, he was glad, very happy that he could finally get his revenge. Lin Tian himself appeared in front of them, and he had purposely removed his mask so that they would recognize him well. Despite his new appearance and his changed traits, the man called Lin Tian was still recognizable in him. The hunters were shocked to see him alive, and realizing what a dangerous situation they were in, they immediately started to justify themselves, saying that it was not their own idea to kill him and it was the company's fault. It was the company that made them do it. They begged for mercy so pitifully that Lin Tian even pretended to believe them for a second that it was just their job. But they soon signed their own death warrant when they decided that his hesitation was their chance to attack. And the rest of the group rushed at our hero, shouting, Go to hell, you monster! How naive these idiots were. With their actions, they signed their own death sentence. Even if before they said that it was just a job, with their actions, they showed that it was a lie. One moment and he leapt like lightning between the silhouettes of the attackers, killing them all instantly. Those weaklings didn't stand a chance. And now that they were lying in the mud, no personal grudge against our hero could help them. Immediately after their elimination, there was a notification from the system regarding the progress in the mission of hunting intruders. Thanks to the killing of these four hunters, he has already completed 40% of the mission and has already received an intermediate reward of 400 jungle points. In addition to jungle points, Lin Tian had also raised his level to 11. And looking at the scattered bodies, he realized that he was wrong when he thought he would hesitate when he had to kill people. Now he was sure that he no longer had any feeling that he belonged to the human race. And now thanks to the points he had received, 
he was able to accumulate 500 points in total. However, it still wasn't enough. It was a real pain in the ass to accumulate those points, and they still weren't enough to unlock the flying skill. Still, it was good that he had some useful allies like these mushrooms. With their help, he was able to not only successfully wearing hunters down, but also dividing them internally. Now it was time to return to the Darkstone Forest again, because the General Goblin was a bit of a handful. It was time to get to Plan C. Meanwhile, in the Darkstone Forest, one of the goblins was on his way to report to his general. His news was very urgent. A lot of hairless monkeys, so-called humans, had come and killed all the brothers outside the valley and broke in. Such news did not please the goblin general. Once again, he was distracted from his rest by those annoying humans. Again, they came from behind the Helen Butterfly clan. It was time to deal with them himself. After all, the king's plan is not yet complete, and they can't let those hairless monkeys get close to the eucalyptus tree. The entire goblin army must follow him and kill all the intruders. Meanwhile, the surviving remnants of Luofeng's group returned to their camp. Their leader Luofeng himself was furious at the failed raid, and he knew who to direct his rage at. He threw all the blame for the failed raid and their heavy losses on the boy who was in charge of scouting and controlling the eagle. Luo Feng was sure that all their problems were because he had poorly scouted the route and pointed out a dangerous road to them. That was something he wasn't going to forgive. But the boy in all this didn't see his fault at all. He sobbed and assured him that everything was fine with the route map, and he didn't know what had gone wrong. It was probably just that the monsters had gotten smarter and had their own strategy and plans to lure and kill the hunters. Despite all his excuses to Luo Feng, it sounded like nonsense that he was not going to believe. Instead, he wanted to make him pay for all the mistakes that led to the deaths of his team members. But luckily for the boy, he had a very beautiful sister who stood up for him in front of Luo Feng and convinced him that it was not worth killing and hurting her only little brother just because he had made a mistake once. It was only because of her and the fact that she was the leader of the mages in his group and had made many sacrifices for the sake of their group that Luo Feng agreed to spare him. But he warned that if it wasn't for her, he would definitely gouge his eyes out this time. So he should try harder next time, or even his sister wouldn't be able to save him from his anger. The frightened boy was even grateful to the captain for that, because not many people got a second chance from him. Then he went to rest, not alone, and ordered the rest of the group to rest today to regain physical strength to depart again tomorrow. Some of his men could not resist talking about their commander's actions. It was obvious to everyone that it was his mistake that had caused the losses, but no one dared to tell him openly. Instead, someone said quite loudly that Sarah had taken it up again today. Of course she heard them and was quite annoyed by their behavior, because her ex-boyfriend had heard them and it could turn out very badly. He was sitting nearby, cleaning his bow after the battle. His face was darker than night, and he could barely restrain himself from dealing with that bastard Luo Feng whom he hated so much. Meanwhile, under the invisibility, Lin Tian was watching everything happening in the hunter's camp from above. He remembered that when he was still working for the company, he had looked at the files of Mage Sarah and Archer Chang. At that time it said that they were a couple, but now it seemed to have changed. It was probably because Chang had committed some crime and had to hide in the jungle, joining Luo Feng's gang of thug hunters. After the jungle was taken over by Shen Kuang technology, the government's jungle bill was never implemented, making the jungle and the world of the game, Jungle Survival, a great place for all kinds of criminals to escape punishment for their deeds. So the world of the game was filled with all kinds of bastards who because of their violent nature simply could not live in a normal world. They felt free to live here, after all, the law of the jungle was even more cruel than those criminals themselves. Lin Tian looked closely at this fellow Chang, remembering how pathetic he was and was clearly a cuckold. Sarah was too free-spirited, and this fact our hero was going to use. The fact that Chang clearly hated Luo Feng and was now poisoning his arrows was very beneficial to Lin Tian. A little time passed, and the moon rose high above the camp of hunters, who were carelessly resting and having fun. It was midnight. The bastards sitting around the campfire were discussing what was happening in the neighboring tent and laughing without embarrassment. Meanwhile, Chang was lying far away from them, and obviously he wouldn't be able to sleep tonight. He was too full of hatred. But that was not all. A couple of mushrooms quietly crept up to him, which began to emit hallucinogenic pheromones. Under their influence, Chang immediately began to imagine everything in the most vivid colors. Luo Feng and Sarah, he just could not bear it, but the hallucinations did not stop. Sarah, the one he loved and hated so much at the same time, kept appearing in front of his eyes. Who was now in the arms of another? Two cheerful mushrooms were responsible for all these hallucinations. One of them transmitted distant sounds and amplified them, and the second affected the victim's psyche and prevented her from distinguishing between reality and illusion. 
our hero's plan was cunning and simple at the same time. Under the influence of these mushrooms, Chang had to do something stupid and do something that, in a normal state, he would never dare to do. And now Chang had finally lost his mind and was heading straight towards Luofeng's tent. Just in time, on the other side, an army of goblins led by their general Gul was approaching, kicking up dust. However, the goblins had one major disadvantage, their stupidity. Even though Lin Tian showed them and explained the way, they were still too slow and could not arrive on time. Our hero's plan was to have all the actors arrive and wound one another, and then he himself would appear and finish them all off in one fell swoop. In Lin Tian's opinion, it was just perfect. And while everything went according to plan, Chang came closer and closer to the tent, and our hero mentally encouraged him to kill them as soon as possible. Meanwhile, the other hunters didn't understand what he was going to do. Is he really going to talk to the captain? But then why would he have his bow at the ready? Chang himself froze in front of the entrance to the tent. It seemed to him that there was the source of all the hall and darkness in this world. Fear awoke inside him, which was even stronger than his jealousy and thirst for revenge. He didn't understand what was wrong with him. How could he even dare to come here with the intention of killing the captain? Fear told him that he would simply be killed for it. That's when Lin Tian's plan went awry. All because of this scared asshole who was incapable of doing anything. As it turns out, this Chang had a very high level of mental toughness. And now our hero will have to come up with something else. Luo Feng saw that Chang was approaching his tent, but he knew very well what a coward he was laughing at his indecision. Even though he was her ex-boyfriend, Sarah was worried about him and asked him not to laugh at him. And Luo Feng hurriedly assured her that he would not do anything to him as long as he did not cause trouble and did not openly oppose him, as Chang was a talented guy and very useful to the group. This option suited Sarah, and she paid attention to Luo Feng's wound, which still hadn't completely healed. It turned out that the weapon that was used was enchanted, so it was not an easy task to heal it. Sarah was also involved in that battle, and almost died. Luo Feng also still couldn't forget that battle. At that time he thought it was just another ambush ordered by the company, but it turned out not to be so. The one they attacked was very intimidating in the fight. It was Lin Tian himself. Then he surprised Luo Feng by possessing the martial arts of a warrior, the stamina of a magician, and the agility of an assassin at the same time. Luo Feng had never met anyone like him before. Recalling how he worked for the company, he said that at first he was just an ordinary mercenary and pretended to be weak to avoid being sent on difficult missions. Unfortunately, he was assigned to one of the nine groups to ambush Lin Tian. The fate of those groups was very unenviable. Only his group survived. But still, he was sure that it was fortunate that the mighty warrior Lin Tian had died. Otherwise, he would have become the most powerful creature in the jungle and a very difficult opponent. Meanwhile, Lin Tian was the liveliest of the living and watched from above as Chang froze in place. And judging by what an indecisive coward he was, it was immediately clear why the girl had abandoned him. Even though this perfect plan to pit the hunters against each other had failed, it didn't really matter. The Ghoul army would soon arrive at the camp, and they would definitely deal with those assholes. In the end, except for the bad luck with Chang, the operation could be considered a success. Soon, the shout of the sentries swept over the camp. Enemy attack! Luo Feng, who had only recently fallen asleep, jumped out of bed without realizing what was happening. As soon as he came out of the tent, he saw that the battle was already in full force. Goblins were already everywhere. He and Sarah immediately joined the fight, but he still didn't understand what was going on and why hadn't anyone raised the alarm earlier. Why such a mess in the ranks and formation of the hunters? What happened to the alert system for monsters approaching? Had it really been destroyed by the goblins? He had no idea that it was the work of the mushrooms. They had removed all the low-grade gems that were used by the hunters to create a magic circle around the camp to warn them of approaching monsters. Luo Feng had no idea how a stupid thing like a goblin could think of destroying the magic circle first before attacking. While Luo Feng was in shock and couldn't find answers to his questions, Ghoul Goblin General ordered all the other goblins to get out of his way. He was going to quickly finish off this hairless monkey Luo Feng in one blow, but the experienced hunter wasn't going to die so easily. So he used his axe to repel the attack. It was a battle between two berserkers who relied on brute force. But in strength, the goblin general had a clear advantage, and Luo Feng quickly sensed this as his arms began to weaken and shake from the exertion. General Gul was not going to drag out the battle and swung once more to finish off his opponent. But Luo Feng was not going to fight a strong opponent. He had long forgotten what honor was and was willing to do anything to save his own skin. As he ran away, he shouted to the other hunters to help him and shoot the monster with their bows. However, the fighting hunters had bad news for him. The archer was not among them. Chang had left the camp just a few minutes before the attack, 
Luo Feng was still trying to escape from Gul and was just furious that Chang dared to abandon the team. So he opened the system window to report this rascal's betrayal of the company. Meanwhile, Chang himself was nearby and watched the battle in the camp. Even he was surprised at how quickly the camp was attacked, but he was clearly not going to help them. He felt that after Sarah had left him, he had every right to do the same to them. Now what was happening there had nothing to do with him. Let those bastards burn alive. They deserved it, he thought. Chang decided it wasn't worth staying there for long and hurried to get away. But as soon as he entered the forest, he began to be pursued by the dark figure of our hero, who realized that Chang's level was still a bit high, as it was two more than his. However, the difference in level could be offset by cunning and surprise. Unfortunately, Chang's high level had unlocked one very useful passive skill, keen senses. Even before Lin Tian attacked, Chang sensed the monster's presence and became wary. Now he wouldn't be caught off guard.